Alex, I'll tell you a little secret just between you and I that I've had some dualistic tendencies in my <laughs> way, way of thinking. And um, if I would express that, I would be made to feel as if I denied evolution or the roundness of the earth, that dualism has come to be uh, really an anathema among scientists and philosophers. Um, what's your approach to dualism? I have an empathetic approach to it because I, historically, this is like understanding a family problem by tracing it back to the ancestors. <laughs> what happened when, so that we see what's going on today. Well, there was a split, right? We, our, our scientific and philosophical grand-grandfathers had to separate maybe for strategic reasons or maybe for more ideological reasons, kind of bifurcate, as Whitehead would say, in the, the world. And so we ended up having bodies, which it's hard to doubt we have them, but also souls or other aspects that it, I would say it's also hard to doubt we have those. And we carried forward and so we had this split and what do we do with it? And that's why there's physicalism and that's why there's idealism. Uh, Dualism has bad press, perhaps deserved, perhaps not, because, of course, if you pose or posit two substances, then you have a huge problem because how do you make them talk to one another? So I would say what can be critiqued about dualism is the idea of substance, actually. And that's helpful if you realize, well, maybe substances are not the right way to think about mm. the world. Maybe the world is made not of stuff, but more of events or processes. So from substance to process, we can move forward. And, but at the same time, I don't think we need to completely throw to the being dualism, because there are other ways of being dualistic that could be made respectable, as I understand, like perhaps property dualism or, or some sort of interactive um, dualism that sounds more like dualities. And so again, we can bring in Whitehead with pan-experientialism, but also dual aspect monism, where there's one mm. thing, but it's manifested in the manifest world. It has these kind of two um, expressions which seem to contradict each other, and nevertheless, they can both be there. Yeah, I, I can make an argument that uh, classic dualism and dual aspect mo uh, monism are, are really the same thing. Um, that's uh, because you're dealing with, you know, what's the fundamental reality that sort of generated this in, in some way, even if it's, if it's brute fact. Um, and so th the question is, is there a, uh, a fundamental reality to both sides of the equation, the physical, and which idealism would deny, and the, the mental, which materialism would deny. Indeed. And we have also help from other systems of thought, like Indian thought, and when you have Purusha and Prakriti. And so thinking in terms of two, it's, it's very useful as well, because, because through the interaction of two principles, you can inject creativity into the world and you can make things happen. So even at this level, I, Again, I would be critical, and um, dualism is not one of my favorite isms, but I, I see it play a role in this constellation we're trying to articulate here. And as you're trying to think about it, there are variations of dualism which deal with interactive dualism, how that could work, how you could have two, two substances interacting, and pro if, if that were to be the case, there's probably some thing below that that unifies them, which gets you to dual aspect monism, uh, or what's called emergent dualism, where the psychophysical laws of the universe, whether that's brute fact or God put them there, doesn't matter. If there are these psychophysical laws that we have no idea right now, but if there are such things, then if you got matter into a certain state, then a non-physical component or element would pop out of that. Mm -hmm. And that, that's sort of an automatic uh, activity, much like karma is automatic. It, there's no God uh, deciding the karma. Karma is just the way the world works. 
That's a fundamental thing of the world. So the fundamental thing of the world is that out of uh, the, uh, this very specific uh, combination of matter, there's a non-physical element. Once that is there, maybe that could last forever. I mean, it's another way of thinking. Yes, and it has to be celebrated. So maybe my final comment would be, from dualities, we can go to polarities. And polarities are a great way of thinking about nature and also metaphysically. It's, it's, it's very interesting what polarities can offer to consciousness studies. Uh, what are some examples? Well, so it, if, you have, uh, if you have a tendency, for instance, let's bring here Bergson real quick, Henry Bergson, right? So you have um, mind and, and matter or, or, or memory and matter. So you have the things that are in extension and things that are in intention. So, it's this idea that something's pulling from one place to another, and in this, it's in this, in this space between a pole, like a positive and yeah, negative, uh, and where where actually things can happen in the world. And so, perhaps that's a trick to make the in manifest. Another example would be the implicate explicate order of David Bohm. So these are all just ways that deal with two, but they assume there's one, and that's what brings. Um, yeah, that's what brings things into existence and makes them evolved in the universe.